Halloween began years ago in Jeremiah's time. Hey, oh no, it was only back to Druid's time. But if you will turn to me to Jeremiah 44, you will see that this time they were worshiping idols and calling upon the Queen of Heaven. And Yahweh told him, I will set my face against you for the evil and will cut off Judah in verse they were burning incense unto their gods and, and to the queen of heaven, which is the worship of Sinuramus and Tobman, or Isha and Horus, the moon goddess and the sun god. The Jews became so bold they worshiping, of worshiping the moon goddess in this temple of Yahweh that they drank offerings and baked their bread in the streets of Jerusalem. These were abominations to Yahweh in, this, in his sight. And still they did them day and night. This is the very same thing that we do when we worship the Day of Dead and celebrate Halloween as Christians. The first commandment, you shall have no other God before me. The third commandment, and you shall bow yourself down to no other, nor serve them, for I am a jealous God. In the streets of Jerusalem and in the temple of Yahweh, they broke these commandments and many others. Yahweh does not take breaking his commandments lightly. Today we are under the grace because of the blood of Yesu on the cross. But Yahweh will only wink at sin so long and then he will judge as he did those in the streets of, of Jerusalem for what they were doing. Now look at how we practice the Day of the Dead and Halloween in graveyards and around the world. We bake bread we have special foods and drinks. We practice, we have games in graveyards. And we dress up for the dead and as the dead. We have parades, we have chants and songs and poems as they did in Jerusalem. And we do it in the name of the Queen of Heaven, the mother of Jesus, the son, the son of the Son, not the Son of Yahweh, the Father of Heaven. And we call ourselves Christians when we do this. And they bowed down to the Queen of Heaven, the Son of the Sun. This is the sun with the sunburst around their heads. Now think about this. How are you honoring Yahweh when you are doing this? The Roman Catholics decided to make a changeover from pagan religions to Christians. A little bit easier. By allowing their new converts to uphold some of their pagan feasts. It was agreed for praying praying to their heavenly heathen gods, they would pray in the remembrance of their dead saints, just as they were doing in the day of Jeremiah. Now it was King David's son that said, There is nothing new under the sun. No, no, I'm nothing. So what they've done here is that they've just changed the name of everything just to fool you. For this is the reason the church, the Roman Catholic Church, decided to call November the 1st the Day of the Saints. And the Mass to celebrate it is called All Hallow Mass. And the outcome of this, the evening prior to this, is called All Hallow Evening, which subsequently is considered as Halloween, in spite of the fact to make October the 31st, a hallowed evening, and all the customs are continued to be practiced. Isn't that just dandy, folks? Sam Halen Romans would observe their dead, and their holiday they join with Sam Halen has a day devoted to the goddess Pomona. She was thought to be the goddess of the fruit tree, and her symbol is the apple. And that's where we get the tradition of bobbing for apples. Ezekiel thirty three eleven, we read, As I live, saith Yahweh God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. Well, don't forget that it is still Satan's holiday. He roams to see who he can devour. Few people realize how very dangerous it is to dabble in spiritualism. We're warned in the Bible not to dabble in it. 
but yet people do it because they want to. It may seem like innocent fun, but it isn't. Wiccans are worshippers of the Mother Earth, the Sun, the Moon, and the Stars. Wiccans are, are witches, and they meet every Friday night with a gathering called the Esbet. They draw a magic circle with a six-pointed star that's called a hexagram, from which we get the word hex. A coven of thirteen stand sky-clad, or naked, in the hexagram and work spells by chanting and doing rituals such as drawing down the moon. The full moon is the full moon is sacred to witches, especially if it's on a Friday. And it is considered to be even greater if the Friday falls on the thirteenth of the month. As darkness sets on October the thirty first, a clan of druids would put on their white robes and hoods. They would carry sticks and Celtic, Celtic crosses as they began a torch-lit parade. At the beginning of the parade, a male slave killed and dragged by a rope secured to his left ankle. The druids would walk until they came to a house or a village where they would shout phrases that was related to trick-or-treat. The treat was a slave girl or any female to be given to a druid. If the people refused to give up a girl as a treat, blood was taken from the dead slave and used to draw a hexagram or a six-pointed star on the door or the wall of the village. Spirits of a horned hunter of the night were evoked by druids to kill someone in that house or village by the fear of the night. If the house or the village gave a girl as a treat, the druids put a pumpkin with a face carved on it in the front door or the gate of that place. And inside the pumpkin was a candle made of human fats to keep the evil spirits away. Thus a jack-o'-lantern was and is a sign that you have cooperated with Satan. Now why would you want one of these on your doorstep? The treats or the female victim was taken to Stonehenge where they were raped and killed and then sacrificed on the sacrifice of a bone fire until all the glowing embers were only left. The bone fire is a original modern day bonfire. It's a matter of luck for the winter's survival. All the villagers were expected to use the glowing embers of the bone fire to light their hearths for a long winter to keep them warm. If you will turn to Jeremiah thirty two thirty five, you see a reference to a bone fire. They built high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Heman, to cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fire to Moloch, which I didn't command them, neither did it come to mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Animals were feared on this night also. Dogs, owls, snakes, and pigs were particularly worshipped in fear on this night among them. Cats were regarded with a special respect. Priests taught that cats, especially black ones, were hallowed. This is why today we think of cats as well as skeletons, pumpkins, skulls, and children with sheets over their heads when we think of Halloween. The Celtic priests also taught that witches ride on brooms through the sky at night and fling down curses on those who did not tribute to the dead by taking part in the customs ceremonies of the night. As we can clearly see, Halloween is not harmless. Satan has people in our modern era mimicking witches and druids of old. All of this is a curse of Yahweh. And we live in a time when witchcraft is being rejuvenated. Movies are filled with witchcraft and many television programs, such as Charmed, are teaching witchcraft to millions. Harry Potter books are likewise featuring the origin of Satanism. Halloween is not a joke. It is not non-toxic fun. This evil holiday is not a part of the life of Christians, and you should not partake in it. The Roman Catholic Church borrowed Halloween from witches which shows how blind we are. 
May we remember that Yahweh said that to worship the Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah, not to do it. How can you know the edge of the ledge is and not to fall off if you do not search and research?